Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to do a gender reveal. It's going to be this cute game where you can throw darts at these balloons and when you pop them, confetti's going to come flying out. So I'm going to show you guys how I did it. It was super fun and we are definitely going to be doing this again. You're going to need confetti and scissors, but I couldn't find colored confetti. So I'm going to make my own confetti out of these dollar rolls of the paper crepe streamers from Walmart. I just cut them into little slices and then I went to those slices and cut them into small squares. I did get light blue and light pink, but then I was afraid that it would be hard to determine the difference between them. So I went back and I got dark blue and I got dark pink also so I could make like a blue mix and a pink mix just to give it a little more color so you can tell what color you're popping when you pop it. As you can see, I'm picking up my little uh, strips of this confetti. I'm picking up bunches at a time to save time. And I'm just cutting across. I cut about four, three to four cuts across each one, and then that makes confetti. This is a very time consuming way to do it. If you can get confetti in the colors you need, that would probably be so much easier. But this was a last minute game we were throwing together and I don't have any local craft stores around me. So I had to work with what I could find at Walmart. So here I am cutting in some dark blue and as you can see once you mix that in I just really liked the color of the mix. So I decided to do mixed blues for the blue balloons and mixed pink for the pink balloons. So another alternative for cutting these is a rotary cutter. I used a cutting mat, I laid out the streamer on the mat and I just took this blade and started cutting up. Now this blade is not my favorite rotary blade which is why I'm using it here and not in my fabric um, because I can't really see where I'm cutting. So while doing this, I felt like my strips weren't very consistent. They were kind of all over the place. So I did prefer the scissor method, but I did want to give you another option in case you didn't want to sit all day with scissors, cramping your hands to death because it did take a while to make the confetti. Once I got these strips into a pile, I'm going the other direction. And as you can see, some confettis are small, some confettis are big. I just felt like my confettis weren't super consistent this way, but it's not like it really matters because once the balloon pops, they're gonna go flying anyways. So do whatever is the most comfortable for you to make your confetti. Heck, if you wanna buy your confetti, that would be so much easier actually. But this is how I did it. If you wanna do a budget way to make confetti, I only paid $4 in total for all of the crepe streamer and I didn't even use I would say not even a quarter of each roll. So we have tons of streamers for decorating. So as you can see, I have a pink mix and I have a blue mix. They turned out super cute. So I'm going to continue this process until I get a ton of confetti. Now, the way the game works is you're gonna have three balloons filled with one color and two balloons filled with the other. Now, whatever color is the gender of the baby is the one there's three of. So they throw darts until they hit three of the same color. You still need the two of the other color to build some suspense. Um, so I decided it would be easier here to separate these into containers. So I knew I had enough confetti to fill the balloons. So I'm going to be doing three containers of pink. Surprise, surprise, it's a girl. And two containers of blue. So there's going to be five balloons in total full of confetti. Now, looking back in hindsight, I probably would not wasted my time with these containers. I did this so there would be an even amount of confetti in each balloon at the time not realizing that you can only fill a, a flat balloon up so much before you just fill in all of the empty space without blowing it up and trying to stuff some in it while it's mid blown up and then air blows out and it's just a mess. So this was actually an unnecessary step putting them in these containers um, because I just stuffed the balloons so they were full and I ended up having extra in every single container because I stuffed these containers too full. But that's besides the point. I've got these black balloons here that I got at Walmart also for a dollar. And I'm just going to stuff these balloons. Now this is kind of a time consuming process, just like cutting the confetti. Um, I used a straw to push the confetti down in. It made life a thousand times easier because you can't shove the confetti all the way down. You'll know when it's full because it'll be tight and you'll see the confetti sticking through the balloon. And so I just continued to fill that. And I do that with all five balloons, two of blue and three of pink. Now I do suggest maybe turning on a show, maybe turning on Netflix, something you wanna watch, a TV show, binge watch a season while you're doing this because the confetti is a time consuming process and so is the stuffing of the balloons. This isn't near as time consuming. Once you kind of get going on it, you get a groove and you get faster at it, but it still is gonna take some time. So yeah, I definitely suggest having something to entertain you during this point of time. I also suggest not setting the balloon down in the bowl like I kept doing because the the confetti, it's just crepe paper. It kept sticking to my balloons and it was kind of a pain and it was making a mess. 
every time I'd pull the balloons out. But you know, do whatever works for you. Like I said, if you have a better way to put the confetti in the balloons, more power to you. I considered a funnel, but I wasn't sure how I would get it jammed down into the balloon. So this is just what worked for me. If you stick around to the end of the video, I do include a clip of the actual game getting played so you can see how they held up to throwing darts at them and how the board held up. It held up great, by the way. Um, and I will even include a little clip at the end of my mom screaming, it's a girl. It was the most hilarious thing. She's gonna murder me for putting it in, but it was just hilarious how she screamed it. So I will include that at the end of the video. Um, but yeah, I'm just stuffing balloons to my, just all day, stuffing balloons. It's all I'm working on. I just cram them in there and then I shove them with a straw. I had confetti everywhere. I ended up not emptying, like I said, these containers, but it's okay because I used the extra confetti to decorate the board. So don't throw away any extra confetti you have. Use it to decorate the tables if you're having a party or make some other kind of craft with it. Um, as you can see, when they're full, they look kind of, you can tell that they're full. The bottom of it is very rounded and you can see it sticking out. So now we're going to work on constructing our background board where these are going to hang. I decided I needed um, two foam boards wide because there's a lot of balloons. And I decided also to do it two deep. So it's going to be four boards in total and I'm going to hot glue them together. The reason I decided to go too deep is just because the darts are very sharp and I didn't want someone to throw a dart really hard like my brother and like take out my board and rip it in half and destroy all the balloons. Um, nothing like that even came close to happening, but uh, you never know, I just wanted to reinforce, so that's why I did this. So I'm going to just sandwich these two boards together using a little bit of hot glue, it just basically gotta hold it together. I did it with the label sides in facing each other so the two blank pretty sides of the boards were out. Just gonna stack this board on top of the other one with a little bit of glue and I'm gonna press down to let it dry because you know sometimes these boards can be a little warped and wonky but yeah if you get these boards on the Walmart app you can get them for 88 cents a foam board. Now if you go into Walmart you're paying more than that for it or if you go anywhere else the Dollar Tree, Dollar General, Hobby Lobby all of their foam board is much more expensive but I got these at Walmart for 88 cents a piece because that's what they show up as on the app for me so yeah just a hint if you need foam board go get it from Walmart because it's much cheaper than everywhere else yes I did price check boards because I was trying to make this a super budget friendly gender reveal this gender reveal in total costed me around ten dollars if you don't count the fact that I already had like the glue and the tape and stuff but just for the supplies for this gender reveal costed me only ten dollars so this is a very affordable and a very fun gender reveal oh that also doesn't count the price of the darts um, but my brother already had the darts so now I'm just taking some glue and I'm just going to glue this middle piece here so that way I can sandwich my two sandwiched boards together. So now I'm just gonna push these together. So now we have two boards wide and two boards thick and I'm just gonna hold these together until the glue dries. And I decided just for a little extra reinforcement, I'm going to add a strip of glue down that little center line, you know, fill any gaps, make sure it holds well. I did end up going back later and reinforcing this a little bit more just to be extra, extra safe because I didn't know where we were going to be hanging this. So now I have all of my extra leftover confetti I had and just some cheapo school glue. I decided to mix this confetti and I'm going to do like a border around the whole board. And this is just a blue pink confetti mix out of leftover confetti. I tried to make it kind of an even ratio. I didn't want to give away anything about which one I have more confetti of. So I'm going to put the glue about an inch across the bottom and I'm just going to use my finger to rub it across. It just seems easier than using a brush for me and I'm just going to wipe it off with a paper towel in between wipes. And then I'm just going to sprinkle confetti on it. I'm sorry my camera goes out of focus. It does this quite a bit during this video. I'm not sure why or what was going on with my camera, but it was having some focus issues this day. So I apologize ahead of time. So as you can see, I'm doing about an inch thick area, rubbing it in with the glue, and then I'm just gonna sprinkle on top with the confetti. I will shake off all of the excess confetti after this. This was just the base layer, and I just wanted it to be cute and colorful. I was gonna leave the board white so you could see what color, you know, popped in the balloons the best but I felt like it needed something. So this is what I did. Here's me shaking off some of the excess into my floor, just so it's not too piled up and not making a mess when I pack it around to different rooms to work on it. 
see camera's out of focus again i really don't know what was going on with my camera this day but anyways there we are we're back in my little work area and we have our board completely decorated and looking beautiful so now i'm gonna struggle a little bit but i'm flipping the board around don't mind my junky background guys this is just where i craft and um this is the back of the board and we have that back seam there i'm gonna reinforce it with a little bit of packaging tape if you guys know me everybody knows i love packaging tape for everything i use the heck out of packaging tape i don't somebody needs to sponsor me or something because i use packaging tape like you would not believe i like that it's clear but it's strong like duct tape and i have this little um staple gun and i just went down and stapled down along that line about four or five staples spaced them out i did record it but you can't see it for my big back in the way so i figured there's no point in even including that clip now i'm going to measure so my balloons are evenly spaced out so first i'm going to see how long my board is from top to bottom starting at the bottom and top of the confetti and then i'm going to use just a little blue um, pencil and i'm going to mark out the middle spot and then i'm going to go and mark out the middle of that spot on top and bottom so i should have three rows going down one in the middle and one a third of the way down and third of the way up from the bottom if that makes sense guys i feel like i'm not good at explaining this heck stick your balloons wherever you want oh, i don't care um this is just the way i wanted to do it i wanted to make sure they were kind of evenly spaced i am going to use my entire 15 pack of balloons because i wanted there to be a lot of balloons to pop i was kind of hoping they didn't pop the right ones all in the beginning so i wanted to have as many balloons as possible to give them you know some buffering time before they found out the gender so i just went through here and i spaced it out so there would be five balloons going across each row so that's 15 balloons three rows of five so i'm just using my measuring here and you, this obviously would depend on how many balloons you're using and how big of a board you're using so just take your measurements and space them out however you want i just wanted mine to be kind of evenly spaced and here you can see me showing you where i put all my dots Here's the rest of my balloons um, after the ones I filled with confetti. Again, I got these at Walmart for a dollar for the pack of 15. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blow up a couple of balloons first to see how big I need these to be. You don't wanna just randomly blow them up willy nilly and then them not fit on your board because you gotta think I gotta fit 15 balloons on this board. So once I found out the size I wanted it, I continued to blow up all of my balloons, trying to get them all the same exact size because you don't want the, some balloons to be small and some balloons to be big or to give it away which ones have confetti in them. Now, I did use this staple gun to reinforce the balloons so they didn't just fall off in the wind. I just put a little piece of packaging tape first and then I went back in with the staple gun and I stapled the little rubber part. Do not staple the balloon with the air in it, guys. Do not do that. That will pop your balloon. Just staple the little hanky part after you tie it, the part you blow on. Staple that. It's loose. It's rubber. It's hanging down. Just staple that sucker to the board and it will reinforce your balloons so they are not going anywhere. You can go back in with tape afterwards and adjust it a little bit so they're hanging a little higher or a little lower. You will see me do that later because you want all your balloons to be as even as possible. If they're all over the place, it's going to make it confusing. They're going to be trying to tell which ones have confetti in them. It just looks better and more uniform if they're all kind of lined up and all the same size. So I'm continuing to blow up balloons to this size and then I'm just going to tie them up. I did skip a lot of this because I figured you guys probably don't want to just see me blow up balloons all day. And so here's me cutting some tape to tape up some balloons. I just stuck it, as you can see, on that little rubber hangy part. And that's the part you staple too when you staple it. Staple gut's totally optional. I just used it for extra reinforcement of my boards and of my balloons. And I kind of just already had it hanging around my house. And I just thought it would be easy. So that's why I used a staple gun. You don't have to use a staple gun. You can even use a regular stapler for this because it's just stapling foam and balloons. I'm going to show you here. I've got them all up at the bottom row. I just didn't want to waste your time making you sit and watch every single balloon and how I hung them all up. So I'm just going to show you with this bottom row. As you can see, I stuck the tape on the balloon and I'm just going to tape it right onto the dot that I drawn with the blue pencil. So I did that with all of them so far. Some of them hang lower than others or hang to the left a little more. The confetti also kind of affects how it hangs, but we're going to fix that with some tape. You can add a little tape to it to raise it up a little bit. Just kind of change the angle of how they're taped. I don't know if you heard that, but that is a confetti balloon. Make sure whoever this surprise is for does not get too close to the balloons or they may hear which ones have confetti in them. Um, but for the most part, nobody could hear anything unless you like try to physically pick up a balloon and shake it. You're not going to be able to hear it. 
So now that I have all of my balloons just taped up, I'm going in with my staple gun. Sorry about my back in the way, but when I get to the last few, you'll actually be able to see me stapling them. But I just held onto the board not to break my foam board that I worked very hard on. And I'm just going to lift all of the balloons so I can get to the little rubber piece that is taped down. And then I'm just gonna shoot a little staple in it. It's super easy. I really like this little staple gun. It's small and so it doesn't have a lot of like impact. It's not super loud. So there I am stapling just the rubber piece. So that way the balloons hang and they're very sturdy. So now I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of packaging tape. You can use scotch tape or whatever kind of tape you want. And I'm just gonna put a little bit underneath on that rubber piece to kind of raise some of them up to try to change their angles. So they look kind of even. Um, just don't let whoever you're trying to surprise too close so they can see which ones have extra tape. I did have to put a little extra tape on the confetti ones to raise them up a little bit because the confetti weighed them down a little bit. But for the most part, that's it. You just touch them up so they hang how you want them and then you're ready to play. Also, you could totally buy darts at Walmart. They're in weird colors, but you can spray paint the tops of them. That is what we did. We spray painted the tops of our darts white and black just so they would be neutral. That is it guys. I hope you liked this video. Here is a clip of us playing the game. I just watched. I did not play, but everyone else did throw darts and they really loved it. And stick around to the end to hear my mom screaming like a crazy person because it is hilarious. There's my brother. He just come to get the darts off the board to start over. We did keep this board. We're going to reuse it and do this game again because our board didn't get destroyed or anything. Oh, it's a girl. That was my mom screaming. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.